I'm embarking on a journey around the world to discover the secrets of lasting beauty. The snail secretion in this. Great health. This is your pharmacy. Yeah. An extraordinary long life. Better skin than I've got. <laughs> Look at him. I'm Rachel Hunter. I grew up in the fashion world. Now I want to see what beauty means to other people. And really, is it a sense of well-being? or achieving perfection from different parts of the world, I want to find the secrets. This time, my tour of beauty is taking me to a place where image and looks mean everything. It's really good for your skin. We make crackling out of it. I'll be checking out the traditional medicine. These are bullfrogs. <laughs> oh! uh... Eat food that's supposed to change lives. Dr. Hong believes that this dish cured him from cancer. And discover why thousands of young people are flocking to plastic surgery. I didn't mind dying on the operating table if I could change this face. I'll even have a consultation of my own. Eyebrow. We recommend lifting. At my age, I know there are things that need to be done. I'm in a country that's obsessed by beauty. It has the highest plastic surgery rate in the world. You probably think I'm in Los Angeles, where I live. Well, I'm not. I'm here in Seoul, South Korea. This city is pumping by night and by day. Sometimes described as the Hollywood of the East, it's at the heart of a cultural and beauty revolution. And for the next few days, I'm going to get amongst it. I'm in this part of Seoul that has endless beauty care products, one store after the other. And people are lining up, buying them product after product after product. There's this insatiable appetite for beauty and skincare, including breast pads to moisturize, I guess. I don't know, and butt pads. There's a pad for every part of your body if you want it moisturized. And it's not just the girls who are into it. Do you have a skin regime? Sunblock and BB skin lotion. BB cream stands for Beauty Bar. It's an all-in-one moisturizer, foundation, and sunblock. You've got amazing skin. Every day I use BB cream. And many guys don't leave home without it. Better skin than I've got. <laughs> look at him. The pressure to look young and fabulous in South Korea is immense. The ideal type of women, they should have big eyes with double eyelids, and small face and flawless skin, very small nose, but a little bit pointy because of media influence. Media influence. Yeah, because of the K-pop. Yeah, they want to look like them. Beauty here is now pretty much defined by local K-pop stars, known for their catchy tunes, trend-setting fashion and facial features, not inherently Korean. And to get that look, skincare is just the beginning. It's like you've got avocado masks over here, a carrot, bamboo, caviar, if you would like a more expensive version of it. <laughs> it's really moisturizing and anti-aging. There's snail secretion in this. This is bird's nest. Korean people, they used to eat bird's nest for their skincare and they made this cream. But you don't get to look like this with only a skincare regime. Teens and early 20s are flocking to cosmetic surgeons for that competitive edge in a country where jobs are scarce. Some parents even give it to their kids as a high school graduation present. Others, like 23-year-old Dong Hee, who I'm meeting today, became famous by winning her cosmetic surgery on a reality show. On the Let Me In TV program, contestants plead their case for surgery in front of a panel of judges. What made you want to go and do the show? I had a big complex about my appearance, so I had a hard time going out to society. So I took a chance to go on the program. I was lucky enough to win. Her prize, facial reconstructive surgery, a nose job, double eyelid surgery, liposuction, and a tummy tuck. $60,000 US worth of work. That's got to be scary. I did not mind dying on the operating table if I could change this face. The results were revealed to a huge television audience. Oh. 
진짜 동희 씨 맞아요? 네, 박동희 맞습니다. And for the first time, <웃음> Dong Hee was allowed to see her new face. 제가 아닌 것 같아서. 아, 어떻게 너무 예뻐요. I thought I was hurt inside, but I realized I didn't love myself enough. I used to think when people were looking at me, and maybe it is because I'm so ugly. But now I think people are looking at me because I'm very beautiful. Wow, I don't even really know what to say to that because it's so true. You know, so many people in the world, they go, oh, but you're beautiful inside and, you know, everything, you know, you should find a way to love yourself and all the rest of it. But I think that you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Everybody is becoming more and more obsessed by looks. Do you think that people need to go through this and look better and better and better all the time? I think it depends on your personal situation. If it is about the pain inside like me, I would recommend plastic surgery. But if it's only about looks, then I don't know if I would recommend it highly. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you so much. You're beautiful. You too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dong Hee now works as a model and her story really strikes a chord with me. I was made fun of at school and bullied at school and told that I was ugly and I had a carrot stuck up my ass and like all these things because I was really tall. You know, my ugly duckling stage kind of turned out just fine. But what if it doesn't? You know, and, and you do have the option of plastic surgery to make those two worlds, the inner and the outer, work. You know, is that wrong? Around one in five South Korean women have plastic surgery, an amazing figure, one of the highest rates in the world. And in the famous district of Gangnam, you'll literally find hundreds of cosmetic surgeons offering their services. I've got an appointment with one of the best, Dr. Park, to see what he might recommend for me. I'm about to uh, go in and I'm kind of a little bit nervous to see what he has to say. Have you made a reservation with us today? Yes, Rachel, Hunter. I'm gonna put this in here, okay. Have a seat first, and then I'll call for you when the doctor's ready. Okay, yeah. perfect, thank you. Apart from trying Botox, I've never had any work done before. It's pretty nerve-wracking waiting. There's nothing worse than having your face picked at, um, and and told what should be done, but the reality, um, at my age, I know there are things that need to be done in the world that we live in now. Kind of sad, right? <laughs> Hi, it's Miss Rachel. Yeah. The doctor's ready to see you. Okay, great. Dr. Park performs more than 10 operations a day, and his team are living advertisements of the clinic's expertise. I've basically come here today to find out what you would suggest mm -hmm. I do. Before we start, uh, let's take a photo of you to analyze. We are going to figure out how to restore some of the changes, okay? <laughs> It's okay, you can laugh. Mm. <laughs> Would you suggest I get um, a facelift? Plastic surgery improves self-esteem. I'm in Seoul, the beauty capital of South Korea, and I have a feeling I'm about to get a reality check from Dr. Park. Uh, let's take a photo of you to analyze, okay? I'm not against getting a little high-tech help to age gracefully, but I really don't want anything too invasive. First of all, yeah. um, you have crease over here, and here, and here, and you have sagging over here, mm -hmm. here. You have to lift some of the jaws yeah. upward, and also here. This is kind of what I was expecting. If we elevate eyebrow a little bit, then your forehead and eyes will look much fresher, okay? Would you suggest I get um, a facelift? Mm, I think uh, for your face, we can do with the uh, lasers. So not invasive yet? Mm -hmm. This is me now, 
And this is what I could look like after cosmetic surgery. Nothing too drastic. Do you like it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's mainly with um, like fillers and mm. maybe some liposuction on the yeah. on the jawline. Mm. We also use the lasers <laughs> for the neck. You do? Neck lines, yeah. Okay. Mm. I mean, I know it's the same in America and everywhere else. People mm. want to look different. But what about, what is it here? We uh, feel that we should be competitive enough to survive in this society. That uh, includes the looks. Plastic surgery is a uh, surgery which um, uh, improves self-esteem, self-respect. We get much satisfaction from our job. Mm. Um, if I was completely honest with myself, what he said is probably something that I should definitely get done. Um, whether I'm going to do it or not, I don't know. Maybe I need a bit more convincing, but plenty of people don't. More than 100,000 foreigners come to South Korea each year for cosmetic surgery, and organising group tours to this particular clinic is tour leader Anla from Australia. So are more and more Europeans coming here to get plastic surgery? Yes, I do have actually a number of friends coming from Europe because basically they just want to look a bit younger. What procedures did you have done? Nose because I didn't have a bridge on my nose. The double eyelids and also the eye bags. A laser, facelift. What made you decide to do these procedures? I'm 46 years old, I've got four kids, and then I was telling myself, look into the mirror, and I thought, I don't want to look like this anymore because I look old and I look you know, really tired and everything. I just want to look like, let's say, 10 years younger. Yeah. That's yeah. all that I want to do. Yeah. Ultimately, I'm on a search for well-being and happiness, but I'd be lying if I said that sometimes I didn't want to look 10 years younger as well. And the clinic has prepared a master plan to achieve just that. Dr. Park has recommended Botox, your forehead lift and eyelid, 1,000. It's a filler, it's 2,000. Okay. I back in this uh, low lab, 4,500. Recommended my laser, it's in... That's more than $10,000 US worth of work to try and turn back the clock. <laughs> I'm not young. How old are you? Me? I'll tell you my age if you tell me yours. Years. You look beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm 44, right? 44. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you look really good. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the That's prices good. are great, and Mr. Parks is, is lovely, and you guys are beautiful. I feel I was in safe hands, but I don't know. Um, I'm still going to think about it. Not quite there. And I think when you, you do something like this, you have to be emotionally really ready to. <laughs> so I'll live with my saggy self. As well as flocking to some of the most modern clinics in the world, Koreans remain big fans of traditional medicine. And far from the clinics of Gangnam, I'm heading for a checkup with a traditional doctor who'll measure my inner beauty. That is the health of my organs, bones, and nervous system. Now I struggle with back and neck pain, and like most people these days, my stress management isn't great. I wonder what Dr. Dong Su will find. Tell me pain. No, I have a high pain tolerance. Right. It's all about the yin and the yang, and how everything in the body connects. What's wrong now? Stress. <laughs> well, it didn't take Dr. Dong so long to uncover my old enemy. Stress. Now he's using a wooden stick to probe the health of my internal organs and increase my blood circulation at the same time. Oh, ow! Mm. That's not good. No, I don't like that. It's also meant to flush toxins out I of my system. It. Yeah, I don't like that. Now you're going to go deeper, aren't you? No wonder it really hurts. <laughs> I, go for it. Yeah. Ow, oh, that's really sore. <laughs> and the beauty is not easy. That one's sore. That one's really sore. This is good. <laughs> What this told him about my body, I have no idea. It was amazing. Fortunately, a translator has turned up to pass on the doctor's assessment. He's saying that you have sort of fever in your heart, which means that you're always like workaholic or stressful. 
you might have problem in this backbone mm -hmm. or yeah, like I do. back. I do. So try to be, you know, straight. Oh, I had a <laughs> surgery on my mm -hmm. lower back, mm -hmm. and then I have a huge disc problem up here. So this area is all connected to your <laughs> backbone. Ah, now that might explain the placement of that probe. I very much believe in this type of medicine. Physically, you're quite strong. I have a lot of anxiety. Okay. So what does he suggest I need to go and do? Can I, shall I go get some chill tea? Gooseberry. So you try, try to make a tea using gooseberry. Okay. You need more vitamin E. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for everything. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> So the doctor's given me a list to really help restore some of my inner beauty, which is the feverish heart that I have, um, my back aches and my stress level, which actually causes the fever of the heart. But where to start to find gooseberries and tea in a traditional market that stretches for blocks? The smell here is so intense. It smells like aniseed or licorice. It's very, very, very potent. There's naturopathic beauty products. No surprises there. This. Is for hair? Hair. What do you mean? <laughs> Apparently makes your hair have volume and growth. This one's the gooseberry. And it hasn't taken long to find what I was looking for, that natural source of vitamin E. What is this? And there's more. Bullfrog. And these guys are millipede. Backache. Really? I have a bad back. I have to try it because it's really good for your lower back, your knees, your neck, um, and I guess stress. Anything for the sake of inner beauty. <laughs> that smell is like really kind of urination smell. Why are you laughing? It's going to be horrible, you? right? How are you doing? OK, here we go. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> OK. I cannot even describe it. I don't, it, it's very chalky. Everything gets kind of caught in your mouth. And it's kind of fishy and salty again. Um, not good. So how much? Like, well, I've got my gooseberries for vitamin E, millipedes for my back pain and stress. So I thought I'd go the whole frog and try just that. These are bullfrogs. Now, they're used for strength. And this lovely gentleman has cooked me up some bullfrog tea. OK. So I drink now? OK. I can't wait to see what it does to my insides. <laughs> oh! uh, <laughs> is this going to make me strong? Strong. Okay. For men or women? Communication breakdown. I'm hoping it's fine for me. Dr. Hong believes that this dish cured him from cancer. Ah, this is good for your skin. We make crackling out of it. <laughs> this is unbelievable. On my tour of beauty, I'm finding that Korea is full of all kinds of natural medicines. But who would have thought you'd find beauty treatments at a full-on meat barbecue? So, what's this? It is pork skin. We make crackling out of it. You know, yeah, it's you can just put there and barbecue and eat it. It's really good for your skin. Yeah, we will love it because there are lots of collagen, so it will make your skin young and beautiful. Now, there's two ways of consuming the pork skin. If you eat it, the collagens are supposed to work their way through your system and repair that skin damage. And there's a more direct way. And also you can make a natural mask with this. Okay. You boil this, okay. put on your skin five or ten minutes. It's really good for your skin. So it's a, a definite alternative way to get collagen on your face. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> but tonight, I'm just eating the beauty treatment. No, it's good. And now for the main course at another restaurant with an entirely different menu and vibe. It's run by Dr. Hong, a former gynecologist who serves a meal that he claims saved his life. So you've been cancer-free for how long? How long? Uh, 12 years. 12 years. Wow. I've come to his kitchen to discover the secret ingredients. What's in the dish that we were making that's for the belief that it cures cancer? Oh, the bean. Yes, yeah, the bean. The key ingredient is these beans, which are also soaked in this rice and fermented, I think, for like five days. So there's anchovies and there's also seaweed that gets made into a broth. 
Can I just pour the whole thing? Yes, whole thing. Okay. I'm not surprised that this has a lot of curing properties by the smell that's coming off this. There's lots of garlic. That powder was sea urchin. There's seaweed in there, there's anchovies in there, there's radish, the spring onions. And it just must be packed with all sorts of nutrition in there. But I don't know about the taste of it. The soup is slow cooked for several hours before it's ready to eat. The fermented soya beans with the good bacteria, good bacteria. that's inside the soup that makes it very, very good. This is uh, anti-inflammatory anti yeah. and uh, for cancer, yeah. protect cancer. Right. But when you smell? Yeah, Korean style. Yeah. A slow, slow food. With the aftertaste of ground millipede still in my mouth, I'm not so sure about trying everything once anymore. You can feel it um, settle your insides down, though, and it, it makes it even. Do you eat it every day still? Ten times, almost. That's delicious. Dr. Hong, my inner beauty thanks you. Thank you. Reflecting over the last few days while I've been here in Seoul, I would say there's been this incredible fusion of the old ways and some of the really interesting new ways. The beauty products, yes, I'll be taking them home, especially the masks. I've never seen this kind of thing in LA. Fermented food, I'm into it. Not sure if I've got the patience to make it at home, but I'll definitely be ordering it at Korean restaurants. Ground millipedes, mm, no, not for me. Oh my God. But gooseberries, yes, for my vitamin E deficiency. And as for cosmetic surgery? I just don't want to be under the pressures of basically what society kind of dictates out there on this. Um, so I still want to live outside the box of this plastic surgery reality. What's left to do in Seoul? But a night of karaoke Gangnam style, of course. Oh, 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 oh,